you it's so are crimes. It's Activision devs do not play their own game. 3,000 devs can't figure out how to add a reconnect feature to a AAA title, I guess. I don't know. Because Infinity Ward doesn't tell their consumers anything. Maybe that'll take some of the sweats away from uh, Shoot House. You can cope about that, for sure. Thanks for tweeting, at least. Thanks for doing more than Infinity Ward has done. They just keep tweeting about the fucking the soccer bundles in the store. Things that are bad. We've, oh. got, we've got a couple words. Why don't you pick it off, Tanner? <laughs> gotta, this is going to be a, a longer section than the first part you guys heard. Change it, obviously, of course. We are live! Boys and girls, welcome to the Drop Shot Call of Duty Podcast episode number... Oh, did I start recording? I think I did. Surely, yeah, I did. Did you? Nice. Uh, Good job, 423. Man. My name is Casey, also known as Razanon. Today, I'm joined by little birthday boy, little Shut birthday up. bud. Don't little, say that. Don't little say happy... That. All right, should we sing happy birthday to you? What do you no. guys think, chat? You want to sing it with me? No. Happy birthday. Shut did you up. know that song was trademarked until like 2015? And that's why was restaurants it? had their own goofy ah uh, songs really? for people's birthdays. Yeah. I wasn't aware. Who I don't know if that's that? true. I saw it it's in a not. TikTok, though, and I believe it. But it's probably not true because I saw in a it talk, on a TikTok. Huh? Yeah. 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 Let's I'm see. I believe in the talk. Was the happy birthday song. Let's see. Let's do a C. Do some uh, research. As of March or as of now, the song "Happy Birthday to You" is in the public domain in the United States. Yeah, this. Uh, yeah, yeah. So there was a copyright for it in 2015. A U.S. federal judge oh, ruled go. it was invalid. Got it. Yeah. Oh, man, that's dope. So now we can sing it to you. Ha Just kidding. Uh, welcome up. to the show. Yeah, today is Tanner's birthday at the time of recording. He is now. You graduated when I did. How old am I? 32. So you're 32 years old now. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah. It's a number. It's a number yeah, for, for sure. sure right? it's, it's one of those numbers, yeah. You do any cool. birthday things yet today? No, I have not. Are you going no. to? Just a quick a dinner at either Chris's house or my parents. I don't know yet. Just a, just a little quickie. I got a stuff to quickie, do, man. Huh? Yeah, yeah, busy guy. Busy. Well, yeah. So anyway, You're not, I am though. Um, uh, uh, and welcome to the show. So yeah, today's Tanner's birthday, and with that in mind, this entire episode is going to be a deep dive into Tanner's personal life. Just kidding. <laughs> Today, yeah, we are going to be talking about uh, kind of some random stuff with Call of Duty. Now, normally, what we do. Uh, on the Saturdays after big updates, which is which would be today, because we got season three reloaded, is we would do kind of a review slash first impressions of said update, because usually, although not super recently, uh, season reloaded patches have had content in them, um, and usually. The game was functional after the patch. So that's normally what would happen. And therefore, normally, we would be able to talk about the patch because there would be new things and it would work also. However, much to my chagrin, neither of those things are the case with Season 3 Reloaded. The game is not functional right now, which we'll get into. And... There wasn't any new content, except a middling AR and a map or two in multiplayer. Okay, that's it though. That's yeah. it. And then there are also, I guess, some playlists that are cool, like Loaded Resurgence. That's cool, but what do you want to review on how Rebirth Island plays when I have a loadout? Hey, I already know how that plays. I've played Rebirth with a loadout before. I don't need to do it from the get to see yeah. how much different it's going to be. Not much to say there. And then there was some weapon balancing, which we'll also sort of talk about today. But mainly what we're going to talk about today is other things that 
recent happenings that have um, been going on around COD that don't really have much to do with the, the new update, frankly. Um, and also, we are going to talk about today the True Game Data video slash exclusive Ace video that released, I don't know, within the last week, I believe, maybe the last yeah. two weeks. Three days ago, I think. Yeah. Uh, we neglected Three, to cover ago. this on Thursday, not because we didn't know about it, but because that was already a fairly long episode. So we're just going to go over it today because primarily, I don't think it's a big deal and we'll get into exactly why. Um, but mainly because many of you in Discord have been begging for our thoughts on this. Uh, a lot of beggars, we, yeah. Which we are happy to provide. Yeah, begging. I shouldn't have said begging. You guys are asking for our opinion on it. That's fair. And we will give it to you. Um, but spoiler alert, way massively overblown. Uh, but we will get into that as well. And then some other kind of things to talk about. But again, yeah, even if the game was functional right now, there really wouldn't be much to go over in terms of first impressions. There really was not yeah. that much that changed. I mean, infill events are, like, uh, uh, enabled now, and they're pretty rare, so... And they had know. already been enabled, too, so... They and that's also true. They kind of already working. Yeah, so... Um, I will, however, give... I played for a couple hours this morning um, doing some weekly challenges and stuff, so I will talk a little bit about our first impressions, but... Uh, it's just not going to be that much. So we have some other things to, to kind of fill, fill the episode with as well. So, um, with that said, uh, what is this in the announcements, Tanner? What am oh, I yeah, we got at? a little, we got a little donation. We got a little offline dono last night. That's very interesting. Yeah. Did you see that? I didn't. I, I literally yeah. didn't actually. Yeah. We got a little offline donation. Um, uh from boomer, boomer. Uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna read this miserable miserable uh, uh -oh. comment but i'll read it okay uh happy birthday tanner crazy that you love star wars so much that you share a birthday with a franchise you love shut up okay uh i still forgive you that you think the first three movies with hayden christensen are the best they all suck they're all fine uh also weird jar jar binks is your favorite okay that's a lie I... right jar jar is not your favorite uh no okay i <laughs> Okay, right. good. All right. Okay. What do you think he, he gave us, like 20 bucks or something? Uh, y yeah, you know, uh, that's not what I'm seeing. That's not the number you're seeing. That's not the number I'm seeing. I, yeah. I'm seeing a weird number, though. Um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It, it I don't is an understand odd one. it at all. I would love an explanation, but Chris has given us. I guess it's got to be the five and the 04, right? It's got to be. Yeah. Um, a tremendous amount of money. In the, in the in the sum of five hundred and also four United States <laughs> dollars, get the sacks. Fuck monetization. Ooh, Not like baby. we would get any anyways. Yeah. Chris, thank you, man. Wow, dude. Appreciate that, buddy. Five zero four. Wow. An absolute Jesus god. Christ. Going above and beyond. Yeah. Well, I and deserve I it because gonna... I am an uncle to his children. So. Yeah, well... I deserve more than that, actually, so... Keep in mind, so you guys might be listening and thinking, like, oh, wow, 504? I, and again, I have no idea why the 4 is there. I'll take it, though. More is better, so that's good. This is better yeah. than a $500 yeah. donation, to be clear. It's $4 better. Um, So you might be thinking, oh, wow, that's that's extremely generous. What a nice guy. Okay, sure. But, so for example, let's say Jeff Bezos donated $500 to us, mm -hmm. right? I would yeah. be angry because I would, <laughs> you. I would be mad. I would say, hey, if you're going to donate to us, give us more Bezos because you're worth like a trillion dollars. This is nothing to you. And much like Bezos, Chris, Chris's wife, right? 
<laughs> is a a public school teacher. So five hundred dollars, nothing. That's nothing to this couple, this power yeah. couple. Because Don't as say, you all know, say power couple. That should be on your list, actually. The term power couple. That should be yeah. As That's you all know, miserable. teachers, public school teachers, are wildly overpaid. Yeah, they get a salary even though they just don't work for three months out of the year. Oh well, it's actually two because they have to prepare a lesson plan. Shut up! You teach sixth graders. It's not hard. It's easy. You get three months off a year, and don't say two because you have to prepare a lesson plan. Oh, but the the state doesn't give them the funds to buy crayons. Hey, they get like ninety five thousand dollars a year to babysit. And also they get a pension, full medical, full dental for them and their families. They're wildly overpaid for not having to do much at all or have many skills. Now, am I saying Chris's wife, also known as Tanner's sister, does not have skills? Call me Cat Williams. Just kidding. No, I'm not <laughs> saying that. I don't know Tanner's wife. She may or may sister. not have skills, sister. That's what, yeah, and that's what I said. She may or may not have skills. That's irrelevant though, because if she has skills, she doesn't use them at her job, which is easy, oh, yeah. which is being a public school teacher. What grade and does overpaid. she teach, by the way? Massively kindergarten. overpaid. Kindergarten. Oh, a kindergarten teacher. Okay, and that's where I get offended <laughs> that we're even using the word teacher. Are you? Come on, what? Are, Kindergartners are what, seven year olds? Know who's underpaid, man? Our first responders. God bless our heroes. Back Stop. the blue, you know? Stop. Nurses are the it. real heroes, and they're not overpaid at are all. Are they? Yeah. I don't think. So, yeah. dude, I saw the funniest Nurses TikTok. working three days a week, going to Mexico every weekend, raging. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I work three days a, I work three days a week. Oh, but I work 13 hour shifts. I don't You also make like $400 a year. Or an hour, rather. Nurses get paid a lot of money. Although yeah. that job is actually kind of hard. They want a um, lot more. Unlike being a public school teacher, but to be clear. I so. think it's kind of the opposite. I think a nurse is just a an adult babysitter. They don't <laughs> know an anything. Interesting they just go in and change your bedding. They don't know anything. They change they don't bedpans do anything. and give you water. Yeah. Come on, or yeah, ice come chips. on, woman. Leave it to the men, you know. Leave it to the male doctors, of course. They know everything. Nurses, yeah. women, nurses, nah, nah, yeah. worthless. Well, yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so to be clear, again, if you were thinking this is like very generous, keep in mind his, his wife, Tanner's sister is loaded, rich 504. Yeah. She probably made that. What is today? Saturday. Oh, and they have 401ks probably made that in a few too, hours yesterday they? morning. I would imagine. Do teachers yeah. get 401ks on top of a pension? I'm going to be I so pissed off if they do. I'm not sure. I, Chris, go do me a favor, Chris. Lie to me in chat if it's true and say they don't get 401ks because <laughs> I don't know if I can take it. That would be outrageous on top of an overinflated salary and three months of vacation a year. On top of probably PTO time they get, by the way. So more maybe like four months. Um, if they also got a 401k, I would lose my mind. I'd lose it. I'd, I would lose it. The whole episode would be co-opted by this thievery. And if you're a United States taxpayer, by the way, you should be angry. So, I am. But anyways, Chris, very kind of you on a serious note. We appreciate it very much. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it, buddy. That is very kind. I would love to know why it was $504 and not $500, Because it's the day, the man. 504 Oh! Biggie asks, uh, huge Tanner, don't spend the $4 all in one place. Raz, what are you spending the 500 on? What's your plan for that 500 that's great, man? That's a great question. Yeah. I need some milk. I think I just ran out of milk. Maybe I'll buy a gallon tomorrow with that. Milk. I, I might, think $3.99 a gallon. So that should cover it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll give you, maybe I'll buy some kibble and have it Amazon delivered to your have door. Delivered to me. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, happy birthday. Your cats can yeah. live another week. Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. What was I going to say? Oh, Rykard also. Thank you for the $5 super <laughs> chat as well. We appreciate Yeah, I think that. there were others. Did we get to any of those? I got Beer to Noob, all of them. Noveria, Cocky Kev. We got all those? I did. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
I well, did. Well, thanks, everyone. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, thank you, guys. Very kind of you. Much appreciated. Without further ado, here's the jingle. Let's get into this thing, shall we? Nerf school teachers, he says. Yeah. True. That's a good question, Biggie. Dental assistants? That is a terribly easy job. You're right. They literally brush your teeth and then they sometimes adjust like the headlamp while the dentist does stuff. That's gotta be one of the easiest jobs there is. You don't have to know anything to be a dental assistant. It probably requires like, I don't know, a certificate or something, but it doesn't need to. I could be a dental assistant today and I would do just as well as someone who's been one for 20 years. It's actually that simple. They say, oh, here's your seat. Okay, I can say that. Um, open your mouth. I can do that too. I can say those words also. And then br you brush your their teeth. You do a cleaning. I've, I've been brushing my teeth for 32 years. Yeah. It's pretty easy to do it for someone else. And then I'll say, the doctor will be right with you. Hang tight. Done. That's it. That's the extent of my my uh duties in that job I, I mean it's still more than the actual dentist does though well, my dentist has never touched my mouth for more than 20 seconds yeah that's because you have good teeth though orthodontists on the other hand you know they're they they do some work but they get i mean there. a dentist they don't do a goddamn thing useless Half of them won't even do like surgeries and stuff. They just send you somewhere else. What That's are they true. doing? Outpatient like uh, surgeries. That's a good point. Yeah. Dentists really only do like fillings. <clears throat> yeah. Because even root canals. X-ray tech too. That's another good one. I've never gotten a root canal, but my uh, my mom and my brother have. And even that, you, the, you don't do them at the dentist. They send you to an outpatient place. So what do the they? fuck do they do? Yeah. I think well, some places do those. Did. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah. Probably, I'm sure. That's some what I'm saying. Do. Half of them just won't do that stuff. They just want to clean teeth all day. I don't know how they make a living, to be honest. It's not that expensive to clean teeth, and there's nobody ever in there. I think we've had this conversation on the pod before, because I remember saying this. I don't get how they make money. I think it's. Have you feelings. ever been to the dentist and seen somebody else in there? I haven't. <laughs> I've never seen another person when I've gone to the yeah. dentist ever in my life. Yeah. I'm the only person there every single time, and they have six employees and I'm giving them $100 for my teeth cleaning, that's all they make in the day. How do they make money? Yeah. I don't get it. It's a good question. It's a good question. How much so. money should podcasters be paid? That's a good question. A lot more than we do, at least four times. Significantly more than we do, and more than dental assistants, and, of course, public school teachers. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's how much we should be paid. So Certainly more than an Infinity Ward dev. Oh, my God. Infinity Ward dev shouldn't be paid. So, yeah. Definitely. Is their pay public, you think? I think you can look that up. You could look up like a range, yeah, I would imagine. Well, I know, like, know how you can look at like county and you know, city employees, you can see exactly how much money they make. I wonder if that's posted somewhere for like uh, big companies like that. I don't think they have to, so probably, probably not. not right? Yeah. But if you like wanted to find out, I think you could find out like an exact number. All I you would, have to do is like ask I would one pass dev. Out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't handle it. I, it's too much. It's too much for me to handle today. So, all right. Welcome to the show today. Call of Duty. So a couple things to talk about. As I said, we will do a little bit of first impressions, um, which we will kind of talk about at the beginning, actually. Um, but before that, quickly, there were some little updates, patches, changes that we want to discuss. So COD Updates tweeted this yesterday, the third. Um, this is the official Call of Duty patch Twitter account. In our continued commitment to combating unfair play, Sledgehammer and Treyarch, in collaboration with Team Ricochet, okay, have taken additional measures against accounts identified as having participated in progression boosting in any ranked play mode by restricting their access to ranked play across MW3 and Warzone. Okay, so I had not seen this, and what I think <clears throat> primarily what this refers to is those 
we talked about this maybe three weeks ago. Uh, actually, longer than that. On Fortune's Keep, before One season... Ago, April 3rd, is that other tweet? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, there you go. Um, Fortune's Keep, there were, like, boosted lobbies. So, you would pay someone for this service where you'd get in a ranked lobby that counts like online, but everyone in the lobby would just all stand huddle together in like a helicopter and you just continuously kill them for a ton of SRSR. And then you would massively inflate your rating. That's what this is referring to. So then they put out this update yesterday, which is kind of random. I guess there might've been also boosting in, um, multiplayer although i've not heard about that i wouldn't be surprised if that was occurring i just haven't heard about it um and then they said this which is weird because just to reiterate we've taken additional measures against accounts identified as having participated in the boosting by restricting their access to ranked play across mw3 and warzone hey ban them though what are we doing? Yeah. If someone so, is willing to pay money to boost their rating and ranked play, are these people above just aimbotting also? Probably not. They've already paid for, to cheat in the game. That was my exact thought. Why yep. are you going to let them continue to play the game? Like, oh, Doesn't they can't make play sense, ranked. Huh? That's cool, I guess, but just ban their accounts. What are we doing? I thought that was very weird, too. So also... This is not like another ban wave per se. This is just restricting those people that they caught doing it in Fortune's Keep from playing ranked play now, right? That's what it sounds like to you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, so what did they do before then, by the way? What was done previously to these people when they yeah, had claimed they, they took action that's a against good them? Question, what action actually. was taken? You're if right. they didn't ban them, they didn't restrict them from ranked play, what did they do to them? I think, I guess all they did was just take them off the leaderboard and remove their rating so they didn't get any rewards or anything. Maybe. That must That's... be it, because you're right. Yeah, what else could, could have happened? I mean, how was that not... Banned. How was that not immediately the first thing you should think of is these guys probably shouldn't be playing ranked play anymore. I'm this, I figured they would be permabanned, because you're absolutely right, and I agree with you. Somebody willing to pay money to boost in ranked play... A lot of times, the same type of person that would pay to literally cheat in the game. Right. As an aimbot, wall hack, soft yes. aim, all of that. So yeah. they yeah. should have been permaban, certainly, I think. Yeah. I mean, it's a clear, blatant violation of the terms of service. If that's not what we're permanently banning people for, then why does anyone ever get permabanned? I don't understand. Is it worse to aimbot than to like inflate your rating? I guess, actually, to be honest, Ultra Omega Fair. If there was a cheater and I could choose whether they were boosting their rating in fake lobbies or aimbotting in real ones, I guess I would prefer them not be in my lobby ever. But but still, they're both really bad. So I don't yeah, I don't get it. I don't know. It's so weird. What were the replies to this tweet, I wonder? I'm actually going to look that up because it pisses yeah, me let's off. Let's do a and, little. And hopefully everyone else was pissed off as well. Let's do a little. Do a little. Shouldn't whistle into a microphone, by the way. I don't. Shouldn't have done that. Um, let's see. Wow, they are just yapping nothing on the TL. Yeah, nothing interesting at all. Wait, where is this tweet? At COD updates. May 3rd, 5.32 p.m. None of the, re none of the uh, replies Is it a reply? are interesting. I don't know. I just went to COD updates, and it's literally the first one. Yeah, the first one I see is from November 11th, 2023. What is going on? Maybe it's because sure I'm not right logged in updates? or something. Oh, Probably cashed maybe. and I'm not logged in. I don't know. Whatever. I Yeah, I believe you. So, yeah, more people should be upset about this, but whatever. Not the biggest deal in the world. Although, just very weird. And then also, we got another little patch as well. This was uh, also yesterday. And I'll pull it up here. Uh, and just a couple of things. So, 
First, they say they write a little paragraph here. The ongoing issue affecting automatic tactical sprint functionality, causing it to disrupt attempts to reload a weapon in Warzone, is a top priority right now. Rest assured, our team is diligently working on implementing a solution, which we're anticipating to release sometime next week. Thank you for your patience and understanding during this process. So this has been, this is the primary thing that I was referring to when I said the game is not functional right now. If I can't sprint and reload at the same time, uh, then I'm just not gonna play. And there are other issues as well right now, correct? You brought one up to me and I forgot what it was. The other one was the, um, like the pickup thing. So basically, I think it's more for controller players. But it's like basically when they try to pick something up off the ground, something happened. I, I don't remember what it was now. Let me see if I can find it in our Discord. Yeah, I forget too. There was another Like basically thing. they end up picking a bunch of items up when they're not trying to do it. Uh, so it's the tap to interact bug. Oh. Um... Uh, yeah, so he was, so I guess when they try to reload, you pick guns up off the ground instead, basically. Oh, that's a big deal as well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, primarily, again, for controller players, we I wouldn't have that issue, but I would have the tax print issue, which is, like, super annoying. Um, yeah. And this is kind of surprising to me as well, because... We did mention this on Thursday, but my assumption was it would have been fixed by now, actually. Surely. Um, like, I thought, like, oh, okay, that's pretty easy fix. I don't think they don't care. I think, I don't think they're being negligent. I think this issue is actually just way harder to fix than I thought it was, or than it sounds like. Because they wrote a whole paragraph about it, they are, and this is Raven, so I believe them when they say it's a top priority. It probably is, and they're trying to figure out a way to fix this, and they just haven't been able to yet. So this is apparently an in, like an almost intractable bug, which is really unfortunate because it's going to be at least Monday at the very earliest that this will actually be fixed now, um, which is quite surprising to me. And I was playing multiplayer this morning, with commando gloves, which allows you to reload while sprinting. And I do not like the new feature they added where they, on purpose, in multiplayer, they said, for commando gloves, they're now going to increase sprint to fire time by 10%. That's fine. And then also they added the functionality of being able to cancel a reload by tax sprinting with commando gloves. I don't know who wants that, because I don't. Um, there is a setting for sprint cancels reload, which I turned off, but that was after I was done playing, because Tanner gave me that idea. So I don't know if that would work as it used to prior, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think, I don't think they needed to make that change. I think the easiest way to fix this, because obviously what they're trying to do is they're trying to keep commando gloves working that way in multiplayer, but have them not work that way in Warzone. And I think that's why it's so difficult for them. Because again, in Warzone, the reason this tax sprint thing is happening is because you have automatically the benefits of multiplayer commando gloves. So it's just carrying over all the properties of that perk to Warzone by default. And that is why this is happening in Warzone is because now commando gloves function that way in multiplayer. Yeah. So obviously they're trying to disentangle these so that commando gloves actually works differently in Warzone than in multiplayer. I would suggest they just remove this feature from multiplayer also, and then it would therefore be removed from Warzone. I don't know how many people care about being able to cancel reload with tax sprint while using commando gloves in multiplayer. I just don't see that big of a population i just scrap it at this point yeah i don't know pretty weird 
Yeah, I agree. This is a... Uh... I saw a lot of tweets about people saying, yeah, I'm definitely taking the weekend off or just not playing until this stuff is fixed because the game feels terrible right now. So, yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, I mean, this might... This could not even be fixed till, like, the end of next week, possibly. Like, there's that's a very possible. good chance this doesn't get fixed till like, their normal update day, which is, like, Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Pretty crazy, man. Yeah. It is crazy, and you're right, because, it, again, if it was an easy fix, they would have taken the time that they spent writing this paragraph to just fix it. So, obviously, it's not that simple. Um, so, yeah, it could very well be a while, because they they've yeah, already what, been they working on it for They basically had three full days. days. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Two full days and then at least a half, yeah. Yeah, so, so that's... No, they shouldn't have... They shouldn't have got a weekend. They shouldn't have got a weekend off till they fixed this. WJ Rock. Yeah. Gaming. WJ Rock. Super yeah. base take. So, anyway. So, we'll see. We'll keep you guys posted on that. I expect it to be fixed sometime next week, though. Um, Maybe, yeah. And then also, we got the nerf to the DG58 conversion kit SMG thing. Um, A bunch of its damage and damage ranges were decreased. I've seen no one using it. It's pretty much shocked. Um, that didn't is, last long. And that this we also told you was going to happen and soon. And this is an easier fix, obviously. So yeah, if you were super, you know, whatever, wedded to that, sorry. Um, however, people are still using the DG58 a lot as a primary. Um, yeah, I saw that. Saw some tweets about that, actually. Metaphor was using it today. Um, I think I saw... Neo also was using it today um, because this nerf was only to that conversion kit. So the base stats yeah. were not touched. So, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, that SMG is chalked. The SMG now seems to be the Striker 9. That seems to be what everyone's using. Yeah. And then Marksman Rifles, uh, the Akimbo Lockwoods had an issue causing shots to not hit in the expected location while firing simultaneously. That is now fixed. And by the way, as I said, I played some multiplayer this morning. They There is no issue at all with the Akimbo Lockwoods. Um, they work? Other than they're awful strong, so if there is an <laughs> issue, if there is an issue at all, it's that they're a little too good. Yeah, that's it. Saw it quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Didn't use them yeah. myself because I'm not cringe, but um, yeah. There you go. By the way, um, God, the DG58 had a 1.4 times headshot multiplier. That was one of the big nerfs. It went from 1.4 to 1.15. Dude, this thing, they gutted it. Oh my God. The SMG conversion kit. Yeah, yeah, the SMG. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Max yeah. damage range from 19 to 20, 12 meters. Yeah, they yeah. ruined it. They yeah. destroyed that. Yeah. It was pretty good. It needed it for sure. Yeah, it needed a nerf. It probably was over nerfed. But again, unless you're going to make it use SMG ammo, then I don't care either way, honestly. So. Yeah. So now on to first impressions insofar as we can give any. Uh, we got a new gun. We got the new mode, which I alluded to in Warzone. Um, we got the miserable, what is it called? Minefield multiplayer met mode. Let me uh, be clear. Uh, yeah. What was that called? I think it was called minefield. That sounds right. So, whatever it's called. I launched the game this morning. Cause I wanted to catch up on my weekly challenges. I had, uh, two weeks to do and start working toward the ball, the new AR. So played this morning. Um, Launched multiplayer, looked at the menu, saw that playlist or whatever. I chuckled to myself and obviously didn't queue for it. Duh. I'll never play it. Come it's on, a bad man. idea. Queue for it. I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. I don't know why they add things like that. So the new content I have engaged with is most of it uh, because, again, we got two maps and a gun. Um, I don't remember what the two maps were one of them is called grime which has its own dedicated playlist another one is called something which does not have its own dedicated playlist so i played grime um 
I wasn't going to lobby shop regular sixes to find that other Grime map. was the smaller one, I think, correct? Grime was the smaller one that I suspected was going to be better anyway. And yeah. uh, it's 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 a solid map. It's pretty good. It's it's like um it's like a seven out of ten map. It's a good map. It's not great. It isn't blowing my mind. But there's also like nothing wrong with it. It's a solid three lane map. Pretty small. As we expected, the water that is on the map is virtually completely irrelevant um and it plays well has good flow i enjoyed it not the smallest map we've ever seen but uh sm on the smaller side uh and it's fun solid uh no no complaints but again it didn't like blow my mind either it isn't yeah. like um what's that really small map we got the house stash house it's not stash house you know that's yeah. like a that's like a really good map. That's like eight out of ten. This is like a seven out of ten. It's good. Yeah. It reminded me a lot. The other one was lot. Rebirth, by the way. That, that section of Rebirth. The other map it was it's a checkpoint is what it's called, and that's that little section of Rebirth. Oh that's dang, you're right. I actually did want to try that, but it didn't have yeah. its own playlist. So mm -hmm. well, it did sucks. Rebirth Island. Resurgence. But yeah, I could just go that. play Rebirth, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> that's a great point. So yeah. Anyway, the map's good. Grime reminds me a lot of the other very recent map we got with season three launch. It was another. It's another three lane map. I will not remember the name of it, but it's like it feels almost identical to that one, actually. It's kind of the same blueprint. Um, there's like one lane that's indoors. There's one lane that's outdoors. And then there's like a middle lane on the outside of the building. It's like almost the same. Um, so it's, it's almost the same, except in the other map I'm talking about, two of the three lanes are indoors. Whereas on Grime, only one of the three lanes is indoors. But besides that, it feels very much the same. Mm. Uh, but again, that other map is good too. So anyway, that's kind of it. And then the new gun, I have not unlocked it yet. I had auto tokens on. Oh, um, come on, man. Yeah. Rookie mistake. I have it off when seasons launch so that I can target the new guns. And then once I get them both, I just turn it on cause I don't care anymore about the battle pass. So I did that. But then when the new season came out, obviously, I, did, I just forgot to turn it off again. So I still need some battle pass tokens. Uh, the way you unlock it is in like sector 27 or whatever. Um, and then you you get the new AR, the ball 27. Uh, so anyway, I not unlocked it myself, but I was picking it up a decent amount today in multiplayer. And it feels fine. Uh, I can almost not really tell that the first four bullets are slower than the rest. I think if I used it a lot more, uh, I would notice that, but I, you know, didn't. Uh, and it, it's a gun. I don't know. Yeah. It's not that interesting. Unless it's, it's going to be good Warzone. on paper in Warzone, exactly, then I just don't care. So Yeah. And that's it. That's too bad. It's just so boring when they add gun new guns that are like unusable yeah i would i would literally rather them just make it slightly overpowered like i don't want them to be broken i don't want the bow to kill you know 300 milliseconds faster than an sva or something but it's like dude at least make it competitive I uh, agree. make it kill faster than the sva like it's just it's not good for you guys either because you add a new content and nobody cares about it nobody uses it yeah like, it, it's so easy to just add in a new gun and it be immediately meta and everyone's like, oh, the battle's meta. You gotta play. You gotta unlock this. It gets people on your game to unlock it. They're playing more to get to it. It's crazy they do it this way. Yeah, it is. It is. Because so. the new guns used to, like, always be really good and they would always have to nerf it when they came out. And that was better for them, you know? Yeah, so. sell more bundles, sell more battle pass tokens, people wanting to skip and unlock it right away. Absolutely. Yeah. It is kind of weird that they don't do that anymore. I think they care a lot about weapon balance, even even like right when a gun comes out, which is good, but I you know, the gun isn't even close to being unbalanced yet. 
it's bad. So like, so like you could do a little more, you know, I don't know. But anyway, that's not the case. If that changes, we'll let you guys know. And it is a shame because unlike a lot of guns, new guns we get, this isn't just another AR because it has that weird fire rate change that like variable fire rate. That's cool. That's a cool mechanic. Wish it was viable because then that would make that would spice things up a lot using it. Nonetheless. Yeah, I was going to ask that, what Biggie's saying about the gun. I thought the gun just had, like, the unlock challenges, like it usually is at midseason, where it's like, get 25 kills with assault rifles or something. Oh, you're right. That is it. Yeah. Yeah, I, w- I was wondering that. Okay. You're right. Yeah, you just have to do the little challenges for them. The sector is active. Yeah, you're right. The I sector didn't... is always active. You just have to complete right. the little tasks. Yep. I totally forgot. I would yeah. not have known that until I unlocked the token. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Yeah. Shoot. Dang, I would have unlocked it today then. Yeah, you probably could have unlocked in like 20 minutes or something. Usually I absolutely that could take have. Too long. Yeah, I forgot that they put... Oh, well, like you said, it sucks. The challenges in there, but yeah, oh, well. That's <laughs> whatever. I'll do it. Uh, I'll do it soon. Um, I hate not having guns unlocked, so I'll do that soon. But regardless, uh, moving on to... You know what? I think this is the next thing. Uh, One other thing as well. We got the weapon prestige uh, camos that require 150,000 weapon XP. And then you get a uh, prestige camo for that particular gun that you got 150k weapon XP for. And it's called Molten Gold. And it is animated and good looking, by the way. And... With every new season and or two every season, I don't know what they plan on doing. Like one at season and then one at season reloaded or just one new one at the season. I don't know which. They're going to be releasing more weapon prestige camos. And I'm assuming they're just going to require additional weapon XP. So kind of like a... kind of it, I would imagine it's going to work like the, the same way the prestige system does. Which is that, okay, the max prestige in Season 3 is whatever, Prestige 7. And then once you hit that, which is level 450 or whatever, then uh, all your XP is like kind of wasted until Season 4 comes out. And then the prestige max is 8, and that's like character level 550 or whatever. And then you that's the new cap until Season 5. But if you don't get to Prestige 8 by the end of Season 5, that's okay. You can still earn it when the next season rolls around because it's all just one big pool of player XP, character XP. I would assume these Prestige camos are going to work that way. So like right now, it's 150k for the Molten Gold one. I'm assuming when Season 4 drops, it's going to be like 300k weapon XP for uh, the next one. So that even if you haven't unlocked 150k yet, you can still get that one and then keep going through to the next one. That's my assumption. Regardless, all that is to say, when we initially initially covered this, uh, we said, I have no idea how much that is. Like, I have no frame of reference for how long or short it would take to get 150k weapon XP. Now I know... It is not a lot at all. Um, I saw Metaphor has it on two guns already. He plays a lot, but I mean, if he can do it in a day, then pretty much anyone using a gun for a while is going to get it. Uh, and then yeah. Breadman, Breadman's stream title this morning was getting the weapon prestige camo on all guns. So, no. Yeah. So if that's even a thought in anyone's mind, it's obviously not that much weapon XP. So this is imminently attainable, is my point. Which I think is kind of cool. Because you still it's still enough yeah. to where you have to use one gun for at least a while, a couple hours, before you get it. Way more obtainable than Obsidian Camo was, though. Which is good and bad, I think. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I'd i have to, like, play for a couple hours and look and see how much XP I have. Because, yeah, I mean, Metaphor, like, literally streams for, like, 10 to 12 hours a day and also gets 50 kills a match. So the fact yeah. that, honestly, he had two done at that point, like, I would think 
I, I that actually sounds like it'd take a while. Like an average player that plays a few hours a week, I mean, that could probably take them weeks, right? That's kind of yeah, what it sounds like. You so, might be I don't right. Because that's um, a good but point, too. He gets way more XP But it's cool for those hour. people that it's just like a passive thing, basically. You don't have to do anything special. You just use your gun. Yeah. You know, just simply use the gun. Interesting. Somebody in chat says they racked up 65,000 XP in only 45 to 50 minutes. Okay, that's very easy if that's accurate at all. I believe that. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. metaphor should have every gun done by now then. But um, but yeah, so that's cool. I think it's a really good idea. Uh, it gets people playing more, gets people something to do, you know, just something little like, oh, I want to play. I want to get XP to get this cool new camo. It's a good idea. The camo looks great. They've done a really good job this year with event camos, special camos, yeah, true. mastery camos, everything. I mean, the nuke skins are cool. The mastery ones are dope. All the events, it all looks very cool. So they've done an excellent job with that. And this is another, another good thing. Yeah, I agree. And that trend did start for all of MW2's faults with MW2. Um, like the uh, event camos and stuff, which is, we've always thought was a really yeah. good idea. A lot of them sucked last year. They, a lot of them pretty, were not that good. Year. Yeah, but it's a good idea. This year. Yeah, the idea yeah. came with MW2, but the really good execution, I agree, came with MW2. It also kind of just like, it proves that having anything to like prestige cod players just love like yep. Breadman putting that in his title getting every gun prestige like that's giving him so much to do because somebody mm -hmm. like him who just plays big map wars and what is there to do right now nothing but he exactly. still plays every day and he's going to play every day because that's his job he's a live streamer he streams every day so giving him something like that you know, it's just good for the game because people see him playing a lot and having fun with it. He's enjoying his time just over something so stupid. Just one exactly. dev taking a couple weeks to make that camo. It's just like a made And it up gives you something carrot. to do. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. just it's it's the same thing where if if they would uncap the level next to your name instead of capping it every season, uncap it. Yeah. Just uncap it. Yeah, Come just on, man. Turn that cork. Yeah. Because if I true. die to some guy that's like level, that's rank 3000 and I'm 550, I'd be like, Jesus Christ, this guy's a nerd, you know? Yeah. And it's just something, some little interesting aspect to the game that they should try to get back to doing. And this is a, this is a really good start, the weapon camo. So I like it. Yeah, Great I idea. agree. And by the way, yeah. And it looks the, really good. It does look really good. The prestige thing, it really does need to be uncapped. We need to stop. There's no reason to cap it. You, the dumbest part about it is like half the people you will run into are max level. They're at the cap. So it, it, it becomes meaningless almost. Yeah. It's like, oh, okay. Just don't even give me a rank. Yeah. He's like, okay, he's max level just like I am, just like everyone else is. Like it's a meaningless rank at that point. The only, yeah. th the only time it sometimes matters is when a new season drops and the level cap has been expanded and someone hit it in like a week, then you're like, wow, that guy's a nerd. But that doesn't last for the whole season, obviously. So, yeah, it's dumb. Um, but anyway. And then the last Call of Duty thing that I want to talk about today on this fine afternoon. That's it for first impressions, by the way. Nothing else Nothing else happened. I so. haven't launched Battle.net, so I don't have any, unfortunately. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, well, you would have the same opinion if you did launch Battle.net, because <laughs> nothing so, happened. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, last thing is this True Game Data video um, that we've been mentioning. True Tony Data, yeah. Uh, true Game Data hit scan YouTube. I'm going to get the link now so that I can link it for you guys in the show notes. So... If you want to watch this yourselves, oh, I will link it for you in the show notes so that you can do that. Um, and I would encourage you to, if you have any questions or want to understand exactly what's going on. But it's a 20 minute video. I watched the whole thing. And the reason I watched it was twofold. Number one... I was going to watch it anyway, because a lot of people on like Twitter have been saying, and in our discord have been saying like, wow, this is crazy or this changes everything or whatever. So it's just an, uh, an extra, it's an explanation of a, another mechanic that has been at play for a while that no one really knew about. 
So that was one reason I wanted to watch it. And then number two slash three is because, again, a lot of people in our Discord, in our community, shout out to you guys. I think it was like, what, Toller, Jitsi, Dub, and... Um, Ox, I think. Cox, yeah. Um, <laughs> was like, wow, you guys should watch this and give your take on it or whatever. So I was like, okay, cool. So I did that. And so did Tanner. And it's a 20-minute video. And the title of the video is pretty scandalous. This is why you miss shots. Uh, Gears of Bad Cod Hit Ridge explained. Instant hit scan drop off in Warzone. Okay, wow, that's a salacious title. Let's get into it. So I watched the 20 minutes and then I said, okay, not that big of a deal actually and massively overblown in my view. So he... Here's the TLDR TLD watched. And again, if this doesn't make sense to you, then go watch the video because he explains in way more detail than I'm about to. And it's going to get a little nerdy. Is it? Yes, but it'll, it makes a lot of sense, actually. So, COD Warzone servers have a tick rate or a refresh rate. So if you guys are familiar with the term Hertz with respect to like monitors or TVs, it's like, oh, this is a 240 Hertz monitor. That's the tick rate of your monitor, meaning every second the picture will update 240 times. So video games online have tick rates as well. So very... So serious video games that are actually competitive and people don't laugh about, uh, for example, would be like Counter-Strike or Valorant. And those servers also have tick rates. And like a Valorant server, for example, I believe is 120, meaning the server refreshes information 120 times per second. So when your character moves, when they shoot, the path of your bullet, all of that information is updated 120 times per second. Because it's not just like a constant stream of information that you're uploading and it's receiving. It has to take it like in chunks. Um, so it does it 120 times a second. That's considered good. That's a solid tick rate. Um, and then Counter-Strike is probably a thousand tick rate. It's a, a lot. I don't know. Um, Warzone, however, also has a tick rate, and it is 20 hertz, 20 ticks. I don't know if they call them hertz, actually. Does he say that in the video? Yes. That's why it's 50 milliseconds. Um, I'll explain that more right now. So every second, Warzone servers will update information 20 times. So when I start like moving to my left, um, you know, if I start moving to my left and then 40 milliseconds have gone by, the server has not yet registered that I've started moving left yet because 20 hertz means, or 20 tick means every 50 milliseconds, the server updates its information. So even though I, on my keyboard in real life, am holding left, the server doesn't start me moving left yet for 50 milliseconds because that is 1 20th of a second because it updates 20 times a second. That's what that means. So with that in mind, I guess exclusive, exclusive Ace had done a video that made true game data do more investigation. And basically he did elaborate tests on like moving ATVs and stuff. And the TLDR is, if you are shooting your gun at someone who is within one tick of bullet travel time of the server, the, the gun will function as if it were hit scan. Hit scan means the bullet does not have any travel time at all. So again, I mentioned this recently in like a Warzone 1, the SPR 
was a new DLC sniper, and it was broken because it was hit scan at any range. And that was a big deal, and it made it like quite strong, and then they eventually fixed it. So what hit scan means, again, is if my reticle is aimed at your character and I pull the trigger, you will take damage. No matter what, there's no bullet travel time. It's instant. And then some games function this way at any range. I think Overwatch, for example, has certain characters that have hit scan guns. And then other guns, they're mm. projectile based. There actually is bullet travel time. In Call of Duty, guns are not hit scan. There is bullet travel time. That's what bullet velocity means. It means how far your the bullet travels per second. However, let's say your bullet travels 1,000 meters per second. Okay, well, if I am within five meters of my enemy and I shoot them with a gun that travels, that has bullets that travel 1,000 meters per second, my bullet is going to reach the enemy before the server refreshes again because it will be in less than 50 milliseconds of bullet travel time. Therefore, the game just gives you hit scan. So the TLDR is, however much bullet velocity you have, how do I explain this? Every single gun in Call of Duty has a hit scan range where the gun functions as if it were hit scan and there's no bullet travel time, depending on its bullet velocity, which is determined by inside of 50 milliseconds, based on this gun's bullet velocity, how far does the bullet travel? So if I'm using a sniper rifle, my bullet's going to travel very far inside of 50 milliseconds, because the bullet velocity is so high. So for example, you can kit out the moors to have like 2,000 meters per second bullet velocity, meaning a moors bullet travels 100 meters within 50 milliseconds. And 50 milliseconds is the number because again, that is one tick of a 20 tick server. The, um, if the server refreshes 20 times a second, that means it's every 50 milliseconds. So basically what you do is you take your gun's bullet velocity and you say, okay, the Ram 7 has 800 meters per second bullet velocity with attachments. How fast does an 800 meters per second bullet travel in 50 milliseconds? Let's say 30 meters. Okay, therefore, a Ram 7 will be literally hit scan inside of 30 meters because the bullet travels so fast that it's connecting with the target between server ticks, there or within one server tick rather. Therefore, it functions as hit scan. And then the big deal about this, supposedly, and someone here can explain it to me if you want to, is that this changes everything. And this is why the hit ridge always feels so bad. Because sometimes my bullet is hit scan when I'm within that um, when I'm within that hit scan range based on the bullet velocity of the gun. And sometimes my enemy is outside of my hit scan range. So now I have to lead bullets again. That's why the hit reg feels so bad. That's why I die around corners. That's why this gun feels so good because it has a farther hit scan range than some other gun. And oh, also I should build every gun I have for bullet velocity so that I get maximum hit scan range. That's the idea, and I don't understand why anyone thinks this is a big deal. My contention is, this is interesting, good to know, and again, if, I, if my explanation didn't do it for you, you can go watch the video. It's, it'll be linked in the show notes, and he has graphs, and he, does, he explains it in greater detail. Visual aids. Um... So it's interesting, but it's not going to impact at all how I play the game or build guns or care about guns. I still want yeah. high bullet velocity so that whether I'm in hit scan range or not, I don't have to lead as far. And also, 
if I am within hit scan range, whether the gun is literally hit scan or not, I am virtually, it's going to feel like hit scan either way, basically. So if I'm using like a Ram 7 and the bullet travels so fast that it will hit you inside of 50 milliseconds at 20 meters, okay. Well, whether it's literally hit scan or there is bullet travel time, the bullet travel time would be less than 50 milliseconds. So either way, whether it's technically hit scan or not, it's going to feel like hit scan. You're going to be aiming in the same spot regardless. And that's true for every gun. So I don't understand the big deal about this. And one like a worst case scenario that True Game Data brings up is that let's say my hit scan range is 20 meters and I'm in a gunfight where the guy is going in and out of 20 meters while I'm mid fire stream. That would feel weird because some of the bullets would be hit scan and I don't have to lead. And then some of the bullets would not be hit scan and I do have to lead. That's the idea. I just, number one, this is a very rare occurrence at all. Very rarely is someone darting in and out of my hit scan range. They're either outside of it or inside of it, or they're inside of it and running out of it and staying out of it because they're running away from me, obviously, or they're outside of it and they're running into it because they're coming toward me, obviously. But I'm, I am virtually never going to experience this weird, like, dance where some guy's like, oh, I'm in hit scan range. Oh, I'm outside of it. Oh, I'm inside of it. Oh, I'm outside of it. And even if they are doing that, which again, a very rare scenario, it's not going to change where I'm aiming and I'm not going to notice almost certainly. And also the time to kill on a gun in Warzone, on average is what? 850 milliseconds. That's less than a second. These, these things happen fast. It's less than one Mississippi. The gunfight has already been over for a while by the time I was done saying that. These gunfights don't take 20 minutes to where this is going to be super relevant regardless. And I also think people are massively overestimating how, or underestimating rather, how fast 50 milliseconds is. This is 1 20th of one second. This is barely noticeable at all. So all of this hubbub about this it's interesting i don't think functionally it matters at all i'm still gonna lead targets the same way or not lead them the same yeah. way and i'm still gonna build guns the same way because some of you and let me correct you now in discord have been very misguided with this information and your takeaway from it was oh i'm building every gun for max bullet velocity now so that i can get some more hit scan let's walk through this okay you're using an SMG. You're using a Striker 9. You have a Zem compensator on and a long barrel and high grain rounds. How can we increase bullet velocity? Okay, well, we can sacrifice damage range to get to squeeze out some extra bullet velocity, 5% or 10% more, by switching high grain rounds to high velocity rounds. That's going to give you on a Striker 9 2 meters maybe of of extra hit scan, hit scan range, range. Yeah. yes maybe two meters of hit scan range but you're also losing damage range so now people are going to be outside of your first damage range more often but your bullets are hit scan so it's worth it okay your bullets are going to be hitting some guy at 18 meters if you're aiming your reticle at them Every time, whether the bullets are hit scan or not. So don't do that. Doesn't make any sense. What else could you do? You could swap out your Zem compensator for a, I don't know. I, I wouldn't even know what the attachment would be because it would be insane to use it, but it would probably be some kind of monolithic suppressor or something that gives you max bullet velocity addition say 20% to be crazy. I doubt this attachment exists. But say there's a muzzle that gives you 20% bullet velocity on your Striker 9. It probably also ruins your aim down sight speed by 20%. Okay. Uh, and your sprint to fire speed by 20%. Okay. 
and then you get an extra again 20 percent bullet velocity four meters of hit scan range why why do you want that why does it matter you could so now you're aiming down sight 20 minutes slower so that you get more hit scan range you're losing effective time to kill you're losing handling you're going to get gapped way more often so this should not be changing how you build your guns at all and it shouldn't be impacting at all how you play the game either if anything all this video tells me is that occasionally when i die behind a wall behind a corner it's because that guy was in hit scan range and the bullet was shot at my character model up to 50 milliseconds ago and then it doesn't register until the next tick of the server when i'm already behind the wall mm -hmm. so it feels like i died behind the wall and that is um i mean interesting but number one nothing i can do about it so i guess now i know but also 50 milliseconds behind cover are you noticing that probably not when you complain about dying behind walls it was probably like a 150 millisecond delay and it was actually just bad hit reg and bad server issues and weird latency or packet loss and it wasn't actually the guy hit scanned you and then you were behind the wall you guys think you're you're clocking a 50 millisecond death behind a wall i doubt you are ever if it feels like you're dying behind a wall i doubt it's this mechanic at play honestly because this would only account no. for up to 50 milliseconds and that's too fast if it, if it feels like you're dying behind a wall number one you're coping or number two it's because something else gave it a way more substantial delay to where you actually noticed it and you died 200 milliseconds behind the wall so yeah i i don't understand the hype and so don't change more... how you build your guns a more realistic example, I think, is like the sonic suppressor on the HRM, because that doesn't hurt your ADS time. It does hurt sprint to fire by 2%, your but that's nothing. Yes, it does. Oh, wait, sonic, you said? Yeah, by 13%. It I also it increases damage, damage range. range. No, it does bolt velocity and damage range. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, that'd be better. But, sure. but the thing is, it's increasing your horizontal and vertical recoil only by 4%, but still, yeah, when you're talking like making a difference between your hit scan range being like 24 meters and like 27, 27 and a half. If you're like right in between somewhere in that range, if anything, adding 4% more recoil is just going to make you miss more shots. That's all at a long true. range like yeah. that with an SMG. So I agree. I guess it's kind of interesting that this, that's info is out here, but to me, it like doesn't matter on hardly any guns. Uh, it, it's kind of interesting for snipers. That's what I saw people talking about because those can have damage or hit scan ranges of like 100 meters almost. But again, if you're used to using a sniper, after two hours of playing with it, you just know where to lead. So me knowing that my XRK stalker is hit scanned to a certain distance means literally nothing to me. I don't know. I just know how to lead the gun as it is. I know how it feels. I've used it enough. So knowing that it's hit scan now is like, all right, I, I know that, but it doesn't affect it doesn't the way that I play anything. whatsoever. Yeah. yeah. So interesting video for sure. But uh, people like wanting to change their whole builds for this. I mean, if you're increasing your gun's recoil by, if, if you're dropping like big recoil attachments, stocks, under barrels, a better recoil muzzle device. And the Zim helps um, with recoil. So if you or pick maybe up that even suppressor, like, you're not only losing the benefit, but then you're adding the 4% on top. So it's probably like an 8% swing in recoil. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense to do in most situations at all, honestly. Um, but yeah, interesting video, kind of, some parts of it. But it's just a big, like, doesn't matter to me. I, that's how I think. Uh, and and kind of like for reference, just so you guys know, um, Ace did a little chart of a hit scan range. So if your gun has 500 meters per second bullet velocity, your hit scan range is 25 meters. So then going up to like a thousand millisecond velocity, meters per second velocity, hit scan range is 50 meters. And then it goes up from there. And in, and in between, you know, it changes too. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. Um, yeah. I, 
I don't even know if this was overblown anywhere else besides people talking about it in our Discord. I actually didn't see a single tweet about this, so maybe people aren't like really thinking about it some. too much. Did you? Okay. Like I guess J God just made a video replies. today too. Okay. I guess J God oh, made a video today. Yeah, someone okay. said in chat. Yeah. Uh, not sure. It'll yeah, probably I mean, blow his, up now that J God. Even about his it. his uh even his stream or his video title it says huge change. So I don't know. But ultimately, yeah, like if it's something we never felt and never realized, then obviously it wasn't that impactful, probably. Exa so. Yeah, exactly. It's like if, because True Game Data also suggested that this has been the case since Warzone launched. Because he said he did a similar test in Warzone 1 and almost figured it out, but yeah. didn't. So if this has been true for, what, five years? Four years? And no one's noticed it until now through CERN level testing? Mm -hmm then obviously it wasn't that noticeable <laughs> because someone would have noticed it within four years without having to do meticulous testing and recording at 200 F 240 FPS and slowing down the video by 20 uh, to notice it, to like see it rather. It's like, okay. And like the example you said about snipers, like, uh, oh, some snipers can have up to 100 meters of hit scan range. Okay. The reason you, the more, the only way to get more hit scan range is to increase your bullet velocity. So if you have a hundred meters of hit scan range, that means your gun is shoot, your sniper is shooting at like 2000 meters per second bullet velocity, which is a lot. So if I'm shooting someone at 90 meters with a gun that has 2000 bullet velocity, whether it's literally hit scan or there's actual bullet travel time, that bullet's traveling so fast that I'm almost always going to hit the guy if I'm aiming right at him. Either way, whether it's literally hit scan or whether there's technically bullet travel time. Because again, hit scan range means the bullet gets there inside of 50 milliseconds. So either way, the bullet has to be traveling fast to get, or to. The bullet has to get there really quickly. Yeah. If it's in hit scan range. That's how it's calculated. So either way, you're not going to be leading these shots. Whether it's literally yeah, and hit then scan also... or not. So it's like I it, it doesn't change how you aim or play at all. And if it did, it would be by pixels. None of you are that accurate anyway, so it doesn't matter. No one's that accurate anyway. The, the difference in, in where you're aiming is so small. No one's this precise. I, I'm literally, I literally pixels, like literally pixels different. So it's, yeah, it's just, it doesn't, functionally does not matter at all. Yeah. And then like, for example, cause, uh, like the Moors would be a good example. Cause that's the one that goes up to like 99 meter basically. Uh -huh. Trouble is with that, if I'm not mistaken, then you have to run the full charge barrel. So it's like, okay, I have to hold down and try to track and then let go on the guy just to get my hit scan range a little bit further. Like, it's not worth running that build at all. That barrel makes the gun terrible. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm going to watch J God's video after this too, see if he says anything else interesting. Maybe we didn't think about, but yeah, yeah to me, it kind of some... just seems like it doesn't matter to anyone almost ever. I, I can't think of a scenario where I'm going to play differently ever or build a gun differently ever on the back of this information. That's my thing. So, like, it is interesting. This is, it was genuinely interesting. I was like, oh, that, and it does make sense. I mean, what else is the server going to do? If the bullet travels faster than a tick, it can't know where the bullet is inside of a tick. That's, I mean, yeah, duh. Like that's, it's actually obvious once you, once he explained it. It's like, oh yeah, of course there's a hit scan range. The server can't know better. It doesn't update often enough. And if the yeah. tick rate of the server was, you know, 30 instead of uh, 20, then the hit scan range would be shorter for every gun because it would be how how far a bullet travels inside of I don't know the math 40 milliseconds instead of 50 so it's just yeah like if anything what this tells me it was something we all already knew make better warzone servers 
Uh, yeah, right. Increase the tick rate, but we all already knew that for these reasons. It's just now they've been like explained and quantified. Um, one thing, however, that might be relevant is uh, True Game Data was unsure in his video of whether or not this means that your gun will kill 50 milliseconds one ticks time faster if it's inside your hit scan range versus outside of it. That could be relevant. Um, but he was very clear and said he is not sure that's how it works. It might be the case that your gun kills 50 milliseconds faster inside hit scan range than outside of it. But it might not be the case either. It might back calculate. That's what he said. That explanation yeah. doesn't make sense to me. I don't really get it. Uh, so I can't summarize it for you. But that was all of his summary really as well. Again, you can go watch the whole video. But he's not sure how that works. Um, I'm not either. But if guns are killing 50 milliseconds faster inside of their hit scan range, then... That makes it maybe more relevant. But again, what are you actually going to change to get that? You know, like, mm -hmm. are you go? Because I'm all like, for me on ARs, I'm already using long barrel and then max velocity suppressor anyway. And on big map, like a lot of people are already doing that. So like maybe they maybe if they're running like a Zem on their AR they would drop it for a spirit fire to get more bullet velocity. But we are also again 50 milliseconds is pretty fast, dude. Yeah. It's not that long. So I don't know. Yeah, um, like I don't know. Like I I went to J God's video and like Reed Boy is the top comment and he pinned it and it said this changes a lot. High grain rounds now being chosen over a grip or stock 100% on my long range guns. But to me, that's crazy. I just, I don't get it. Like, I'm so, how much would that, okay, so his hit scan range would go, like the SVA, from like 47 meters to like 52. Yeah, about 47 to 52. And I mean, his recoil would increase by like 10 to 12%. You're just yeah. going to miss more shots, if anything, right? Right. Yes. I don't understand exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. It makes sense, like, on paper or in theory, kind of, but then you actually look at it and you're like, oh, maybe not. That's what I think, at least. Because, yeah, I mean, high grain, it's adding 5% gun kick, 8% horizontal recoil, and 8% vertical, right? So it's adding that. And then if you're also then dropping a uh, stock on the SVA or an under barrel like the... Uh, um, True and heavy. The brew and heavy, I'm trying to find it here. It's like you're losing 10% or that's helping 10%, 8%, and then you're also getting firing aim stability. So you're not getting that 10% benefit. You're not getting that 8% benefit. You're not getting that firing aim stability benefit. And then you're also just strictly losing recoil control by putting on the high grain ammo. So it's like when it comes down to it, swing. you're losing like 18% gun yeah. kick to get five meters of hit scan range. What? Yeah, huh? How often is someone what? between 47 and 52 meters I, from you? Exactly. I mean, what? I like, don't know. I, I think this is all cap and stupid. I don't know. Yeah. 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 Like if you can afford to run high grain on your long range guns, do it. Yeah. But sure. do it for the velocity and the, do it for the velocity so that it's easier to hit shots and the damage and, range and mainly do it for the damage range. That's what actually is relevant in my opinion. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, and I, I do that anyway. So, like, I was running high grain on the SVA because it's so easy to control. I still am mm -hmm. going to do that. But yeah. if there's a gun like a, I don't know, any like a subverter. I don't run high grain on a subverter. I'm now not going to run high grain on a subverter. Because you're right. You're probably dropping an attachment to do that unless you were otherwise doing it anyway. And if you are, if you miss a single bullet, none of it then it was all for naught and your time to kill is way slower than it used to be. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. It's just, yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Uh, unless there's some key piece of this puzzle that Tanner and I are both missing, which I don't think we are, then this should not impact how you build guns at all or how you approach gunfights at all. 
I I just don't see it at all. Yeah, interesting. It kind of just seems like, if anything, yeah. something to somewhat hype up and make a video about. It's content. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's that important personally, but yeah, like like you said, a lot of builds you're just gonna run that anyways. So it's like okay, now you know, but I. There are just certain situations for certain guns where you definitely should not drop recoil attachments to get an extra five meters of hit scan range. Just don't do that, you know? Don't do that. Yeah. But certain guns make sense and you can't get away with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and if it, it yeah, if it made sense to run high grain before you knew this information, it still makes sense now, obviously. That didn't change, but it's it like if it didn't make sense to run high grain before you knew this, it still doesn't make sense to run it now. You're it's not yeah. the juice is absolutely not worth the squeeze. So I don't know. Yeah, there's our opinion on it. But TLDRs do not change your gun builds. Or you know what? Change your gun builds. And then when you don't notice, because you haven't by the way, everyone's saying like Reed Boy, he's been playing for 14 hours a day for five years. And he has not noticed that this is how it's always worked. And now that he knows this, he's going to change his gun builds. Okay, man. Hey, if you didn't notice for five years, it's probably not super relevant. Probably not worth ruining the recoil control of your gun to run. So by all yeah. means, change all your gun builds for a day and then realize it is absolutely not worth it to do that. And then go right back to your old build that works better, that kills faster practically not theoretically, but practically, and go back to playing as if you didn't know this information because it won't change how you play at all. Um, yeah. It's just, yeah. Just, I don't know. I'm glad they made the videos. I think it's cool. I think it's interesting. It's good to know. Um, and now maybe you can blame servers when you die behind corners. Caps Locked came in his pants, by the way, when this Did video he? came out. He just did a big fucking cum in his pants. Yeah, <laughs> did he, he did a think? massive cum. Yeah, because he's been talking oh, wow. about server issues lately. He's going to ignore that this has always been the case with COD servers, by the way. But he's going to say, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I, I you know what? Nothing if on I, the TL now. No, I'm looking right now. There's nothing. Once because he, he quit playing. He doesn't play COD anymore. Oh, yeah, he's restful time. Yeah, fuck caps lock. If he, um, once he sees this J God video or whatever, I guarantee you he's going to make a tweet saying this explains the weird server issues I've been talking about. This is why you die behind corners. No, it's not. If you're dying behind corners, the server is fucked at that moment. It is not. It, you didn't die at a maximum of 50 milliseconds behind a corner and notice it. You guys are not super athletes. I... I don't even know if a super athlete would do that, actually. What's the yeah. record reaction time for a human being? It's like 120 milliseconds. So if you're noticing... Mine's 119. Okay. If you're noticing that you <laughs> died so behind bad. a wall, less than half of the fastest human reaction time ever recorded, then, okay, you should be in a laboratory. But guess what? You don't notice that you died 50 milliseconds behind a wall. Again, at a maximum, it's probably on average like 30 if this is even happening. Um, you were never noticing that. It felt like you didn't die behind a wall because you died so quickly after you got behind cover that you you didn't process that you were technically behind the wall. It didn't happen. So if it feels like you died behind a wall, it is not for this reason. It's not because you were in the hit scan range. It is because the server was fucked and you were actually 200 milliseconds behind the wall and then you noticed it. And that means something else is going on. It's not the hit scan thing. Um, or again, more likely, you're just coping and you want to blame you being shit on the servers or whatever, which is what Caps Locked has been doing for two weeks. So, yeah, doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter at all. So, yeah. Um, w. Anyway, yeah. If you guys disagree with me, by all means, explain to me why this is relevant or a big deal and why. And then also change your gun builds and let me know how that works out for you in a week. Because I guarantee you're all going to go back to your old ones or 
If you don't, and you're like, hey, I actually am doing way better, then your old gun build was shit. <laughs> you should have never been using it anyway. That <laughs> So, yeah, that like, I, case, I, I, that's possible. Like, yeah, Biggie... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I, I was going to say, Biggie did, like, uh, make a good point in chat that, like, the SVA doesn't have a lot of recoil anyways, um, so it's not the best example. I was more just using the SVA as an example because it's probably the most popular long-range gun right now. But, yeah, that is a gun where... You can probably easily get away with running high grain instead of an under barrel because that gun doesn't have recoil. But Which when the meta shifts or if you're anyway, using yeah. a different gun, there are situations where, yeah, you need those recoil attachments, especially if you're playing like big map or something, you know? It's not worth destroying recoil for me shooting some guy at 100 meters when I'm playing big map just so there was a four meter hit scan range even though I'm already well past that, you know, that, that the guy's all outside of regardless. Yeah, exactly. Almost every time he's outside. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. Or he's inside of it and he would have been either way. It's yeah. not, he's not in that weird five meter, no man's land that you're yeah. like ruining your gun build f to get hit scan range in 1% of your gun fights because the, because you're going from 47 to 52 meters of hit scan range. How often is a guy at 48 meters exactly in Warzone? Like, it happens, but I mean, are you going to ruin your every other gunfight, your recoil control for those rare scenarios? Don't. Or do, so I can laugh at you. But Yeah. yeah. So anyway. Um, nice dog, man. Yeah, he's super cool. Uh, yeah, and then other than that, I think that's pretty much it, buddy. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, that was, that actually was kind of, as I said, our first impressions episode. And again, I am, I'm very curious what we're missing on this hit scan thing. If any of you can tweet, go in Discord, it's probably best. Do a tweet. Go in the Discord and the feedback channel, let us know why I'm dumb and don't understand how, why this changes everything. Because it's also every gun has a hit scan range, so it's not like this makes certain guns like really good or something. Like I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Let us know your thoughts, uh, and then yeah. As I, again, as I said, this was kind of was our season three reloaded first impressions. So once they fix the uh, tax sprint interrupting reload, and well, that's it for us. That's all we would need. We will start running again. Now keep in mind, however. Tanner is going to be out of town. He's going to Zion National Park for his birthday for 10 days. So we will still have our regularly scheduled episodes next week. Um, and we'll give you guys more details on that on Monday. Um, but Tanner will not be here for the Wednesday episode. And then on the Saturday episode, we have a little surprise treat for you guys. A little pre-recorded oh, surprise little treat. treat. And here's a hint. A treat. It's a treat, and it is not a Q and A episode. Something else. Something <gasps> else entirely. What could that be? And you guys are going to enjoy it tremendously. Uh, and then on Thursday, I will likely just do a, a little, little solo broadcast. Good luck, man. Unless any of my friends want to come on, if they want to play Call of Duty, but they probably won't. They're they're the imps of Lemang, so they're they're running around Grey Zone Warfare right now. Crimson. Is it Crimson Shield? Is that what it's called? Crimson Shield International, buddy. Yeah, Crimson the war crime Shield faction. International. Yeah. W it's war so, crimes. It's crazy. It's crazy reading those faction descriptions and choosing anything else, by the way. Stay humble. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Yeah. From left to right, it goes from like the nice guys to the the at literal war criminals or implied yeah. war criminals. Yeah. So anyway, yeah. Uh, I'm not saying it again. 